Civilization is a conversation. And moral progress is always the most shocking part of that conversation. Every great moral advance in human history has been met with shocked revulsion by the rulers, by the powers that be and those who depend on them. The great abolitionist Wilberforce spent more than three decades making the case for ending slavery before the British Parliament finally voted to outlaw the hideous practice over the third of the globe ruled by Great Britain. John Milton wrote his passionate defense of free speech in 1644. Freedom of the press was not achieved in England until 1695, more than half a century later. Equal rights for women and minorities, freedom of trade, separation of church and state, the right to divorce, each of these advances was considered an appalling break with virtuous traditions, and they all have one thing in common, one thing. In the absence of free speech, these moral advances would never have occurred. The principle of free speech rests on the most fundamental intellectual virtue, which is humility. Intellectual humility is the fundamental recognition that we do not have all the answers to all the moral problems in the universe. Any reasonably intelligent student of history sees this pattern over and over, that what is accepted as moral perfection in one moment is turned over as immoral prejudice in the next moment. The idea that the state, the centralized aggregation of coercive power in society should pick and choose acceptable arguments and ideas was once thought commonplace and, and religious dogma was forced down the throats of the people by the armed might of the government. Over the course of hundreds of years of religious warfare and over the piles of millions of corpses, the separation of government and arguments was created. You see, this is what happens. The moment that government has the power to attack people for holding a particular opinion or, or making particular arguments, civilization ceases to be a marketplace of ideas and becomes something quite different, something quite disastrous. During the Protestant Reformation, hundreds of years ago now, various divergent sects each tried to gain the power of the state and its power to compel people to enforce their belief systems on everyone else. The Anabaptists fought the Calvinists, who fought the Zwingalians, who fought the Catholics, and so on. People with differing fundamental beliefs about virtue and God and salvation could not live peacefully, side by side, because the sword of the state was available to cut down the minds of those who disagreed with them. If you didn't get control of the power of the state, your opponents would and they would use that power against you. So, sitting out the conflict was not an option. You win, they lose. They win, you lose. No coexistence is possible when the state controls ideas. It is absolutely astonishing to see just how much opposition there is from the anti-rational left to anyone who wants to bring an argument against the falsehoods and the hysteria that they put forward. It is just astonishing. And I am like every reasonable, decent, peaceful human being. I am trying with all of my might and all of my rhetoric and all of my energy and efforts to stop the war that is coming. This feral escalation of abuse and violence and threats and deplatforming is going to escalate into war. History is very clear on this point. And I don't know if the left knows how much it's going to escalate. I don't know if they want it. I don't know what the hell is going on. But I'm telling you, 
it's coming unless we keep free speech alive unless we agree to stop using threats and violence verbal abuse hysteria calling people far right nazis literally hitlers unless we can cool that rhetoric we are going to end up with bayonets pointed at each other's hearts i am comfortable and content in my conscience i cannot be swayed i will not self censor i will not castrate myself out of fear rather than bring the truth to a world desperately thirsty and in need of reason evidence the socratic method philosophy solutions solution comes from peace reason evidence debate conversation and i will not self censor out of fear of loss and that means i need choices the future of this show the future of this conversation the future of philosophy as it stands hung by the thread of a whim of someone i don't even know that is not acceptable for me in the long run help me continue to do what i do the most necessary thing i believe in the entire world is teaching people how to think teaching people how to reason teaching people to raise their children peacefully and to have quality relationships to be surrounded by love to pursue virtue to be good seen what we're up against i now recognize how many resources we need to bring to bear on this growing demonic mob you can talk about these ideas with people in your life and don't back down don't back down say it clear say it strong say it proud what it is that you believe in and how opposed you are to the substitution of violence for reason discourse do not back down i'm not backing down i'm in fact going to go even further this has propelled me to go more deeply and more passionately and more powerfully into my engagement and conversation with the world do not falter this cause do not fail what is necessary because when we fail if we were to fail i don't think we will but if we were to fail the regret that we would experience when we see the tide of collectivism anti-rationality and violence sweeping over the remnants of a formerly great civilization the amount of regret that we would feel the amount of self-contempt and not downright self-hatred that we would feel should we fail is worse than any difficulty we have in striving to succeed recognize that on the other side of failure is self-contempt self-hatred and possibly incarceration or death itself that's what happens when the left gains power i am not backing down i am going forward and i am dragging a recalcitrant and anti-rational world behind me if need be the final fight is on